Diversity by doing is supported by Stanford Biodesign as well as Fogarty Innovation. And so one of the things that Stanford Biodesign was doing at the time was looking for a director of health equity. But I'll get to that later. That's how I met Tamu. Just a little background on her. She is a developmental psychologist and thought leader who brings expertise and lived experience in communities facing inequities in her pursuit of social justice through institutional and systems change. So that just sings to my ears. Uh, her arc in fighting for change began over three decades ago with efforts aimed at dismantling apartheid, retaining students of color in academia, and updating the U.S. Census to reflect the reality of multiracial Americans. Since then, she's been engaged in power building efforts that synergize resources, facilitate equity oriented decision making, and turning advocacy into what's most important actual outcome. Um, she's the CEO of the Equity and Wellness Institute, where she works collaboratively with a talented team and staff and consultants uh, to assess and meet a wide variety of clients and communities' needs. Uh, naturally, she has served on numerous local, regional, and statewide organizations and institutions to support them in their aspirations of advancing social justice in communities throughout California and beyond by providing comprehensive strategy development, research, and advising services. So that's one of her jobs. The other job that she had <laughs> is when Stanford Biodesign brought her on board last fall as their Director of Health Equity and Inclusive Design. It is my absolute pleasure to introduce Tamu. Thank you so much, Ingrid. I loved meeting you last fall, and I remember when you invited me to do this, and I thought, I can't do this. I'm not in med tech. You said, gosh, you can't. <laughs> So I'm really delighted to be here. There we go. So as Ingrid mentioned, I'm the CEO of the Equity and Wellness Institute. And um, I started um, my career in consulting, actually, when I was just about 24, 25 years old. Um, I was pregnant with my first child and realized that I needed to have some flexibility in my life. And so I am now uh, on the verge of turning 53. It's been a long time um, that I've been in this world. Um, I did um, start at UC Santa Cruz as um, getting um, my undergrad in sociology with an emphasis on social inequality. I thought that I was going to be school teacher. So that was what I had thought for, you know, my whole life um, that I was going to do. But, you know, life took a different direction for me. Um, and I actually wound up getting a fellowship um, with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation um, called Developing Leadership in Reducing Substance Abuse. And um, that fellowship was phenomenal because um, it allowed me to utilize um, the resources uh, that it, to go to grad school. And so we had funding to, you know, be able to do a professional development project, but also to do our um, our own, um, uh, I'd like to do a leadership project, but also our own professional development. And so I did not actually take the standard path of applying to grad school. Um, I uh, went to UC Davis and I said, I have funding, can you let me in? And I'll prove myself. And that's kind of how that went. I did not have any of like the prerequisites to do the program that I did, which was a, a human development um, doctorate. And um, I still don't have a master's degree. But this is a photo of my mom and me when I graduated. She has been a really instrumental part of my life. Um, and she was part of the civil rights movement um, and really just raised me with this um, feeling that there really wasn't work for social justice. Like I didn't understand that there was anything else that could be done in life. Um, and she's still um, very much a huge influence in my life. I just called her about an hour ago on my way driving in Stanford. So some lessons on being a social justice advocate. Um, this is a snapshot of Portrait of Promise, the California statewide plan to promote health and mental health equity that I was asked to speak 
um, when um, when the Office of Health Equity in the California Department of Public Health um, was first initiated, 2013-2014. Uh, uh, and so that's been kind of my vantage point is also seeing um, how health equity has really spread as a movement um, throughout California and the rest of the nation. Um, and so I had movement onto the road uh, as well. So here are some of the lessons that I have uh, in this regard. Let your values guide your work not the other way around. Every industry and every sector has the need for equity, justice, inclusion, and belonging, whether they know it or not. And I really wanna underscore every sector, every industry. Um, there isn't one that doesn't need it. Also, this is not what you do in isolation. So partner up, keep learning every day. There's always more humility to lovingly or grudgingly accept. So every single day, like wake up with this mindset of, I have something to learn today. I wonder what it is, you know, this curiosity and uh, openness and to take exquisite care of your mental, emotional, and physical health that of itself is a revolutionary act. And I remind myself of this often, take as much downtime as I can. Um, my employees, I really encourage them as well to take as much downtime as possible. Um, so we have to take care of ourselves if we're gonna do this work. Uh, the snapshot that I have on this slide, by the way, is from a racial equity action plan that I did um, for the homelessness sector in Sacramento. Uh, this is one of the um, groups that I belong to that does sh social justice work around birthing justice. This is actually uh, the work that my mother started many years ago with Birthing Project USA. And also I do a lot of work um, in the arts community as well. I'm taking a commercial break um, because there is a really exciting opportunity that I want to mention to you. It's the Innovation Fellowship. Um, there's Buyers Center for Biodesign, and um, we are about to essentially launch the application season. Um, it will be opening up soon, and I would um, strongly invite you that if you have any interest in pursuing this fellowship, um, that you look on the website or contact Megan, who would be more than happy to chat with you about it or put you in touch um, with previous fellows or current fellows who can tell you more. Oh, that is a fabulous opportunity. So that is um, my little commercial break for you, where I go into the rest of my advice. Lessons on growing your career. Um, some of my social networks. This is a network that I have um, with other social justice leaders of color who are Jewish from around the country. Um, and so I take advantage of being a part of uh, this cohort, um, as well as Leadership Forum. And so here are some of my nuggets uh, in this area to actively cultivate multiple professional networks and to be of service to those you wish to mentor. Um, seek out people who are doing what you'd like to do someday and ask them to share their career journey and their advice with you. And to know that your reputation brand. So you want to protect it with your life. Um, everything that you do is your brand. Everything that you put out there represents you. Um, and so you want to be incredibly careful um, with every interaction that you have, everything that's in social media, um, that it will stay with you, especially in this day and age, indefinitely and to invest in your professional development. So this was one of the things that was really lovely 
started with the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation's fellowship is that I had this funding for my professional development, not only to get me going on grad school, um, but also to be able to go to conferences where I could meet other people, um, you know, professors and researchers who were doing work in fields that I was really interested in. And it really taught me how important it was to put myself into those kinds of environments. And so I would say that for you as well, look for scholarship opportunities is something that you want to go to that you can't afford, um, but always um, be looking at investing in your own professional development. Um, the snapshot that's up here is from the TED Talk that I got to do last year, which I was really excited about. And um, it's for a passion project that I have around ending smoking, that smoking still accounts for 20% of the deaths in the US, that even at the height of the pandemic, uh, unfortunately killed more people um, even than COVID. And we're looking at it killing potentially a billion people in the coming century. And so um, this is a passion project of mine. And I really made a point of going and doing podcasts and lots of things to sort of position myself to be able to do the TED Talk and put it out there. And I would just say that, like, look for the opportunities to get your brilliant ideas that you have out there. And I'm really happy to say that the idea that I've been working on for the last 20 years is really hitting its stride and um, even the UK it has it in Parliament right now to pass it. So here are some photos from my time at the Office of Health Equity um, where I would say surround yourself by inspiration, right? So if you need to go to conferences, whatever it is that you need to do to get yourself around other people that are going to inspire and um, make sure that you do that. There's also a photo on here with an intern that I had at the time at the Office of Health Equity. Um, I think you should always be looking for opportunities to intern with folks, to learn from folks. Um, you may also be in the in the position to bring on an intern um, at this stage in your life. I think I started um, like mentoring people when I was in my early 20s. And I will tell you that some of those folks to this day, I'm still in contact with projects. I hire them to do projects. And so these relationships can last really a lifetime. Including this one I absolutely love when I was kind of digging through my photos for this for you. And I saw this one. Um, the young man that's in this photo who's wearing the tie um, was my intern, one of my interns at the Office of Health Equity. And I was so impressed with him. And he and I kind of stayed in touch a little bit here and there over the years. And um, I realized about the opportunity to snatch him up and hire him. And he's now my health equity manager. He's like star employee. Um, and so, you know, when you make those connections, those relationships with people, you never know what's going to come of them. So lessons on being an entrepreneur and a consultant. Um, these are some photos of my family. Uh, you can see and eclectic family. And I will say that growing up, I felt like that was such an incredible liability. Um, you know, it just felt like being so different from everybody and not fitting in anywhere. And at some point around the time that I went to UC Santa Cruz, I realized um, that this did not need to be a liability, that this could actually be a gift and was one of the co-founders at UC Santa Cruz students of mixed heritage, and went on to really look at how I could add value. So as I meant, you know, as Ingrid mentioned in my introduction, getting involved in the U.S. Census Bureau changes that were happening at that time. And then also when I went off to um, grad school, um, looking at like what kind of dissertation work did I want to do? This is a family photo of mine. I am that little baby in the middle. It's such a ridiculous photo. I did um, my dissertation work on um, looking at the factors that were associated with healthy socio-emotional development with um, biracial young adults. And so being able to do consulting work and have a career that had that as part of the basis, as part of the springboard. So I would say in terms of becoming an entrepreneur, 
entrepreneur or a consultant, don't do it if you're risk averse. You still need to save up or have a safety net to get you through the dry spells. Make your uniqueness your superpower. So what I was saying about like, if there is something about you that, you know, really is yours, own it and bring that into the consulting world um, or into the entrepreneurial world. Operate in your zone of genius, whatever it is that you love, that you are really good at, like do that thing and partner with other people, the things that need to support. Uh, that you need in order to support you doing your work and know your value and negotiate accordingly. I'm even going to give a shout out to someone who is joining us today, Renee Kennedy, who she looked at my LinkedIn profile because she saw that I was doing this um, a few weeks ago. And because I saw that she looked at my LinkedIn profile and I saw her profile, I was like, look, our worlds really intersect. You want to get together and connect? We did. I wound up hiring her for a project. You know, like put your right um and then yeah this photo that's up here is from an award that i got from the sacramento business journal in 2022 for the work that i've been doing around dei which has been really um exciting um my mother snapped this photo of course she did um she was actually teaching at the university of san francisco and asked me to come in and do a guest lecture for her um, but i've taught there and at uc davis i would say that that's part an entrepreneur being a, a consultant is that you can teach, which is a really fabulous way to be able to get your, your ideas out there and have a lot of influence. And then um, this is from the work that I did with the California Arts Council, and I created their um, strategic framework and still continuing to do some consulting work for them. Um, and so I think it just goes to show like if you have a passion or an interest in something that there is probably a place they can use you as a consultant for that. And these were the thank you notes that I did with a bunch of focus group participants that I um, met with as part of that journey. And here's some contact information if you would like to reach me. By all means, feel free or reach out on. Um, oh, look, that's my timer, my 15 minutes. <laughs> if you want to reach out on LinkedIn, by all means, do that as well. Thank you so much.